Thank you. Yep, so uh, I'm Dan Ney, and I develop network automation tools for Viasat. One of the tools that I developed um, that has served uh, the networking team very well is a network audit tool um, that's implemented as an Ansible playbook. So uh, I'm happy to share some of the details of this tool with you. In terms of the scope, uh, this network audit tool is used to identify any configuration variance from an expected configuration. The tool right now is used to audit about 70 sites with a combined total of about 300 uh, network devices. In terms of uh, uh, the number of lines of configuration, there's about 300,000 lines of, of config that, that we are, we've modeled and that we, uh, we audit. The audit supports uh, the you know, big vendors, um, Arista, Cisco, Juniper. Right now, when we, you know, we have the audit run on a scheduled basis where it, it runs uh, you know, every night, um, and it takes about 10 minutes for it to run across the entire network if it's done all at the same time. We can also run it uh, on demand you know, whenever we want, and there's pipelines that we have that will also kick it off um, and it takes about two minutes per per site. So the configuration is modeled in YAML, um, and we chose YAML. You know, it's a natural choice um, working with uh, Ansible, and it's uh, pretty readable, pretty understandable, short learning curve for um, for a networking team that otherwise, you know, really aren't all that comfortable with software in some cases. We uh, we developed some you know our our YAML models are custom um, built, and we did that because you know we have the, the ability to define every or you know model every piece of configuration in our network that we need to support. So you know regardless if there's a standard model that exists for some piece of our configuration or not, um, we you know we can we can handle that. We also um, have like macro definitions for some of our, our YAML settings where with just a handful of, of settings we can configure hundreds of lines of configuration for, um, you know, for devices in our network. We have multiple sites and those sites are pretty much, um, they're very similar in their configuration so we can, you know, abstract out those similar pieces of configuration into these macro kind of definitions. Um, in terms of our interaction with the devices, um, we've maybe uh, would be surprised to hear this, but we evolved to uh, using CLI and SSH. So we started out, the first iteration of this tool used uh, vendor-specific APIs. We used NetConf. You know, we were using a very programmatic way of, uh, you know, software-intensive way of, of, of doing this network audit tool and when I first introduced it to our network engineering team they were really not all that comfortable with not really understanding exactly what was going to happen with their configuration in their network so they wanted the config the rendered configuration from the tool in a format that was more familiar to them um, and that being the CLI And in, in for Juniper, the, the network engineer strongly wanted the format of those of the configuration to be in the set format. So, um, if you're familiar with with configuring Juniper devices on um, the set format, um, you know is you can you can include a, a lot of configuration um, parameters within within one line, and that's 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 what the network engineering team wanted. So based on that feedback from the first iteration of the tool, um, I decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop the next generation using CLI. It's going to have an output that you're going to be comfortable with, you're familiar with, you're going to know, um, and as I you know, talk further about the tool, exactly how this is going to impact um, the network. 
Okay, so um, that's the background um, for, for the audit tool. So the first piece of uh, information that we need for the audit um, is a golden or, or reference configuration. Um, and so th that golden config is, um, is generated based on our, our models, that you know, our YAML um, documents or uh, Ansible inventories. With, uh, with the golden configuration, we have to know, uh, you know the currently running configuration on the devices, the active configuration. Um, so the device, you know, we pull out from the device when we run the audit, you know, what's your configuration right now. And so the, those two um, configs are compared, and um, we perform an intelligent diff so that we maintain um, the hierarchy of the commands that are used to construct that config. Um, and you know it, it generates uh, what we call a, a deltas file. So with that deltas file, we can do a, a couple of different things um, with it. If we find that those deltas are actual configuration items that we need our devices to have, um, then you know we can take that set of deltas in a maintenance window or at some uh, convenient time and play just play it back to the network devices that need that need that up uh, update it also might be the case that the you know the the devices configuration is actually what we want and in this case maybe a network engineer deployed or tested out a piece of configuration in one segment of the network determine that yes, this is working out good for us. We want to deploy this to other parts or maybe all of the rest of the network. So in that case, we'll, uh, we'll update our modeling so that that configuration now becomes kind of the standard, that golden configuration that, um, that we want to use for the network. Um, if we are developing that uh, you know, some new model, maybe some new parameter that we haven't had support for before. Um, you know, we're able to uh, work on that um, new model offline. So we'll generate offline configuration, and in this way we can examine what our goal of configuration would look like without actually um, interacting with the device. Um, it just makes it um, developing of those models a little, little uh, more efficient. So the source of truth that we use for our golden configuration is um, a set of YAML documents, Ansible inventories um, stored in Git. And the, um, the updating of those YAML documents, so we have a few different ways that, that we update um, those YAML documents. The preferred way that um, we're, we're getting to, more and more of the engineers are, are getting comfortable with it, is by using um, Jinja 2 to programmatically actually generate those YAML documents, generate that inventory that we're going to use for configuration. Um, with, um, with a set of Jinja 2 templates um, committed to our repo, we have a series of pipelines that will go and detect that, okay, this Jinja 2 template has changed for the generation of the YAMLs. It will generate a new set of YAMLs. If they've changed, the pipeline can commit them back to Git and then kick off a network audit um, in which you know, this new set of deltas resulting from that Jinja 2 uh, or template change, um, the network engineering team can now say, okay, we have these new templates. This is what the configuration would look like if we applied these uh, to our network. There are... Um, there are other uh, teams that have some uh, responsibility for some aspects of our configuration. Um, it might be security related, for example, where that team is, has got some tooling in place where they generate a spreadsheet that uh, maybe is a group of ACLs. You know, it might be something that they want to have incorporated in the network. And so since they already have their data available in an Excel spreadsheet, we allow them to just uh, commit that to our repo. 
um, will extract out of it what we need in terms of what that means to us in our YAML documents. And so we'll, we'll you know, that spreadsheet basically becomes an update to our YAML. Um, and then we'll pick that up, run a new audit, and now the network uh, config updates will include, um, you know, what originated as that Excel spreadsheet. And then uh, lastly, uh, you know, the engineer can go and update that YAML uh, document directly. So uh, to put it all together, um, our network audit, um, you know, is based on, like I said, uh, Ansible uh, playbook. And the playbook is written to go out and, f and first um, generate that golden configuration. And then from the device, it has to um, pull out um, several pieces of, of, of relevant data that we need. Um, the running configuration um, we'll need. In the case of um, Cisco and Arista, they have what's called a, a, a default configuration. If you're familiar with Cisco, Arista, the, this is show run all. Um, and we need this because the um, for Cisco and Arista, if there are configuration settings that are default, they will not get displayed in the CLI. So we have to know that if there's something that the device doesn't have listed in its config, that it's actually missing rather than a default value that wouldn't get shown. We, uh, we also query the device for um, its LLDP uh, neighbors. Um, we need that um, as a kind of a validation for our interconnects um, to our peering partners, for example. Um, uh, so that, that's important for us to grab that. And then we also, for example, from Cisco, um, the state of their VLAN database isn't shown in their running config, so we go out uh, and we, we grab that um, as well. And with uh, all of that gathered information, we then will generate that uh, that Delta's file that, you know, to the network engineers looks very familiar to them. They'll know exactly what differences are going to um, happen with the network. So I, I mentioned uh, using LLDP. Um, and so we have, you know, we refer to it as a hinting service um, where if an interface has LLDP enabled, we assume that the description that, that is important to us for for different reasons that the interface description has a certain format. Um, the first part of the format we um, expect when LLDP is enabled is the remote um, host. The second part of that, we expect that to be the remote interface on that remote host. And then the last part is just uh, arbitrary. Um, there could be more um, useful identification for that circuit. Um, so, um, just to talk more about the LLDP, um, when we run our, our delta, we, we run the, the audit and we spit out the delta, um, the description will, will give a hint about, well, this is what your current description is set for for this interface, and to follow the standard of what we expect for an LLDP-enabled interface, it should be, um, it should be um, like what's shown. Um, so the the tool works in two halves. It works to first to remove configuration that's not supposed to be there. That's why that no statement is there. And then it um, adds configuration that it wants to be there as a second as a second phase of it that I'll that I'll show. Um, so just in terms of the flow chart, real simple. Uh, when the network audit tool runs, it first removes any artifacts from any previous run. Um, it'll get the active config from the device. Uh, it'll build um, golden config. It'll do that um, intelligent comparison between the two. If, um, if the device has configuration that's not in golden, we call that extra config that has to be removed or should be removed um, from the device. And we um, identify that with either a no statement or a delete statement, um, whatever the case may be. Um, if there are interface descriptions um, and we find that there is LLDP information for that interface, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll you know, then go and check to see that they match. 
Um, if there's configuration on the device that is not, um, or there's configuration that's in the golden that's missing from the device, we call that a gap in the config, and so that has to be that has to be added um, to the device's config. Um, and then finally, you know, if if there are any extras or gaps that we that we have found through the audit, we'll write those results out to uh, this deltas file, and. Um, so when the audit runs, if there's no deltas file, that means that there was no differences between the golden and active, and basically the two configurations are in sync. And then, uh, you know, just for um, uh, uh, long-term storage and historical tracking, we'll we'll publish the results out to a out to a database. So um, after the audit runs, we have, uh, you know, we'll leave behind the files that basically are used that, you know, you can kind of figure out why the deltas came out the way they did. So they'll be prefixed with the, uh, with the inventory host that um, that audit was run for. And it'll, um, so the artifact will have, you know, the currently active defaults, the current golden config for that host. Um, as well as, you know, then the results, uh, the, the deltas uh, result. So I can do, uh, I can do a quick uh, demo. So I, I, I have a, uh, uh, an Olive uh, Juniper virtual machine running, um, and I'll just run I'll just run the audit against it. So in this case, um, the the uh, golden and active configurations um, for this device are in sync. So I don't have I don't have a deltas I don't have a deltas file um, in this case. But my active config um, it's 555 lines long, a bit shorter than our uh, our our production um, config. But this is my VM. So what I'll do now is I'll change uh, I'll change this network address in this policy. And uh, with, with this change, um, since I'm changing a, an address, um, it's going to want to delete the previous setting and add uh, the new uh, update. So now if we, uh, if we look at the uh, resulting uh, delta, you know, we see that, you know, this is the address that we changed. So the tool is saying, well, this, this, uh, this address should be removed. And uh, here's the updated or new, uh, you know, network that should be part of this policy. So, you know, this is the kind of output that the network engineer can look at and he can know, you know, really without too much difficulty exactly what the tool is going to do to the network. I know it's going to delete these things. I know it's going to add these things. Um, you know, it also could, could wind up or could turn out to be that maybe we have a couple of different um, proposed network changes that may be in this file. And in that case, um, if, if, it's, if it's really important that a certain section of that config gets there and the other part doesn't, um, the engineer can, you know, can edit this file if need be and, 
delete something that 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 really we don't want to be part of the, of this uh, update at this time. But it's you know it's it's in a format that that they understand what this tool is going to do. So now, um, so there's there's two phases. One phase is to actually figure out what those deltas are going to look like, and then the next phase would be um, to synchronize or to you know take that and play it back to the devices. And uh, we you know we have uh, Jenkins pipelines that'll that'll do all this stuff. It'll stage the deltas. And then the, the engineer can look at those deltas and then click a button and say, okay, I want to sync this and just, just play that back. Um, and after the, the sync is done, um, our pipeline will go ahead and run another compare, which I'm, I'm going to do now. So after uh, we generated um, the deltas and then we ran our sync playbook, um, we see that you know those deltas are no longer there. The two configurations are are, are back in sync, and that's the network audit tool. Any uh, questions, comments? Sorry. Um, so I mean, like I said, it's it, the the output from the tool is, is a is in a format that they really are comfortable with, and so we have people on the team that are really really strong networking engineers, but maybe not as strong with the software part of it. So we have the pipeline that will kick it off; it'll run. Here's their delta, and you know they're they're comfortable at least um, accepting what the tool will do for them, and you know they're slowly learning um, and becoming more confident with the Jinja 2 and the Ansible part of it as well. Oh, sorry. So um, the, the question is, um, what's been the impact to the network networking team in terms of, of their time and, 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 and you know, has it, has it benefited them? Um, yeah, because, I mean, like I said, we have in our network uh, many sites, and we have multiple people that are managing different parts of our network. And so sometimes changes will come in that, you know, we're not aware of. Um, a network engineer might, you know, forget to set some config on this part of the network that needed it, or, um, you know, our modeling comes out and says, well, you, you, these things should be set in this part of the network, but they're not. So I think that it's more um, that we're able to catch errors that they would make if they were doing everything by hand. Um, and it allows us to say, wait, you're not following what the standard says you should have set for this, you know, this community list or whatever, whatever, the, whatever that case may be. So the time savings would be more of catching errors sooner than later. Um, so I started out using their provided um, libraries, but there was a lot of, I found a lot of shortcomings there. So Ansible, with, with Ansible 2.1, Ansible provided this standard, um, um, you know, set of modules for interacting with the devices based on SSH. And so I've had to make many modifications to even, even those provided by Ansible to deal with things like banners that they didn't deal with. Um, and anything that was of interactive, of anything that was of interactive behavior at all, the, the, ans the canned Ansible stuff didn't handle. So I had to write custom code to, to take care of all that um, stuff. But it's largely based on what Ansible 2.1 initially was.
if, if you change something that would be a default, it does come back, and, and that is displayed. But for Cisco and Arista, they both operate the same way. They have so many thousands of, of, con of settings that are, that are default that they just don't show you if that's what the value is. Um, that's why I need to go and get that to make sure it's something that truly is missing or not. Thank you. 